All right, we're on to changing the uh, rear drive shaft on this Jeep. It's got like 340,000 kilometers on it. Divide that by 1.6, you'll get the, the miles. So right now, it's got a bad back U-joint on the OEM shaft. And the OEM shaft is non-serviceable. It's like it's non-greasable. And it doesn't have a means of removing the U-joints. You can take it to a driveline shop and have them fit it for replaceable U-joints, but I chose not to go that route. I decided to buy the cheapest uh, dry shaft I could find on eBay instead. I think this is like 130 US delivered with some crazy low amount. I was a bit suspicious about it at first, but it appears like it's been built with some care. It's been balanced. I'd like to think that that 12 gram weight on there is for a reason and not a decoy. It's got some part numbers on here. They've got a, a mark to uh, identify how you're supposed to put this together to keep the U-joints uh, in time. You can see the U-joint on this end is in time with that U-joint there. This was supposed to be greasable, but it's not. And they don't tell you what kind of U-joints are in it either. There's nowhere to grease the uh, spline shaft or the U-joints, which is kind of good and annoying at the same time. Um, yeah, I'm assuming that that's the front. And it's got like a, a four-way piece on here. On the back, it's got that guy there. I could be backwards, I'm not entirely sure. The factory shaft is uh, aluminum and like twice the diameter of this. The yeah, OEM one probably rides a bit nicer, but we'll find out. And uh, I'm doing like the fourth pinion seal on the differential. So I don't know if it's just, I don't know what the deal is, but when I got this Jeep about six, seven years ago, it was pouring out of the pinion seal, so they replaced it then. Last year, I had the seal replaced again. Last a few months, I had the yoke and the seal replaced at that point. Then two or three years later, it's leaking again. So this friggin' Jeep just pees all over the driveway. I kind of wish I had a dirt driveway. This interlocking is a bit of a nightmare for me. I don't have nice enough vehicles for that, this driveway. But um, yeah, so I got to go under here and I'll tell you right now, this can be a dangerous job and you could kill yourself doing it. So let's take a look. You're not going to fit under with a creeper under the gas tank unless you're really tiny. So I put it up on stand, on uh, rolled up onto some ramps here and block the wheels. The problem is that if your parking brake doesn't work, like the, you have to leave it in neutral the whole time you're doing this. So it's uh, a problem. It could roll away and kill you. So I've got it blocked both directions on both back wheels. It's got a tendency that's kind of going downhill right now. So I put a chain on it so that it can't go more than a couple inches. It won't run me over if something bad happens. So ideally, this should be done on flat ground with the vehicle raised up a little bit or on a hoist. I'm not sure if everybody should do this job. So I want to tell you that in advance because um, you could get yourself in a lot of trouble. So I'm, I can't take responsibility for that. I can just tell you that I've done what I feel is safe for me on a slight grade of a driveway. If this driveway was any steeper, I wouldn't begin to try and do this. So um, I'm going to go under and pull out the drive shaft and put them side by side. And then I guess we'll take a look at what fasteners there are. It appears that there's just bolts, four bolts on each end holding this thing in. We'll compare the uh, flanges and uh, show you how to determine you've got a, a bad U-joint. Back again, having a struggle here. I decided the safest thing to do was to disconnect the back of the uh, drive shaft. And then I'm going to use an impact gun with a 15 millimeter and a U-joint to get these bolts out. Because it was, they are super tight 
I don't feel that you can get them off with a wrench. It's just not really doable. So I'm going to go in there with the impact gun. This is a big guy. It's a three quarter inch drive with a reducer to a half inch. And I think this is going to be the solution because like the vehicle was going to the bolts are really bound up and you're when you're turning a wrench you're turning the whole drive line and it's torquing everything it's just not ideal so I'm gonna go with this right onto the uh, the bolts one at a time and then you can turn the the uh, transfer case so that you can uh, get access to them without having to move anything so I guess this is the first time I've done this on this vehicle so it's just a bit of a learning curve here, so I thought I'd share that with you. That's success. So that's what it looks like with the uh, flange of the uh, joint removed there. Um, yeah, you're not going to be able to do this job unless you have an impact gun. The fasteners are just too corroded on the far ends to get them through because like, it's a pretty small flange and they're not blind holes, so it just gets rotten right messed up. There's the other end there. It's a bit dark down here, so I'll get the uh, drive shaft out. We'll take a look at it. All right, there they are, side by side. So the uh, round flange will be for the front. I was mistaken there initially. And to check the U joint, see if we can do this. Try to get the camera propped up here. With it in the vehicle, you grab each side and. You can't hear it, but when you're twisting back and forth, there's some looseness in there. And then you can't have any looseness. There's a, the spec is zero. So that's uh, the reason we're doing this job. So I'm gonna clean the flanges on the vehicle on both ends so that I can get these guys to mate up. I don't think that clocking the diff to the transfer case is important. And in most cases, you got to kind of turn them around to uh, line them up anyway, so they're not going to be in position. But definitely having the uh, U joints clocked to each other is important, so do do that. I took some 320 grit sandpaper here and gave it a good scrubbing. I think it's 320, pretty coarse. So right now, you see this one's completely flat base. Whereas this had a bunch of windows in it, so anywhere there's a window you have to sand it off really good so that you get a good flat mating surface on the transfer case. And this U-joint here has a bit of play in it as well. With wheel bearings, like sealed wheel bearings, like on that truck or the front of the Jeep, if it has no resistance and it's super like floppy, then there's no preload left in it that's a good indicator that the uh, joint has gone bad as well. So I'm going to do that seal. I'm not going to make that part of the video simply because it's been done like three times now or four times and it's just not going to be a good deal. I'm just going to put the uh, pull the nut off of there, put in the new seal and put the nut right back where I found it because every time you do this, you change the preload and the tension on the uh, diff and the pinion, and I don't want to adjust it more than necessary. So that's all I'm going to do. It's not like a building a new diff where you have to set up all the alignment. If you over crush the crush shaft, it's inside of the diff. There's nothing you can do to go back. So it's going to be gentle and not have it super loose. So I'll go get that done. All right, we got her in. I did find that the flange is here. You can't use a socket. You can't even use a, a box end wrench. It won't fit on there, so it's pretty hard to get these tight. Had to put a bar through it and crank on the box end. But like, box end wrench is not really known for their torqueability. So hopefully this doesn't fly off. I did use the blue Loctite on the back. I was able to stretch it out far enough to reach and got it tightened up. I put the blue Loctite on there. I assume it's necessary because the fasteners had them on them when they came out. 
So that's about it. I'm going to take it for a test drive and see how things turned out from a drivability perspective.